Hey guys, today I want to walk you through how to actually take your data and write a conference abstract for your data so that you can go and present your data either as a poster or a presentation and actually get accepted to present at different conferences. Before we get started, I want to let you know that this is actually a collaboration with Lishu and Dev. She has an amazing grad school vlog channel. So if you want to see more vlogs and things like that, make sure you go check out her channel and subscribe. But in her video, and I'll link it down below, she's actually going to walk through this video and then actually try and put it into practice in creating her own conference abstract. So if you wanna see someone else walking through these same steps, make sure you go and check out her video and check out her channel. So let's first walk into what is the purpose of a conference abstract? So your conference abstract really wants to tell your readers three different things. The first one is why would that conference's audience care about your research? The second one is what have you found or what do you plan to find? And the third is how is your findings going to lead the field forward? In your conference abstract, it's really not about you. It's about making sure that the people hosting the conference really thinks that you presenting there is actually going to be edifying to the people who are going to be attending that conference. So you want to make sure that you made it clear how your research not only made a difference, but also impacts that specific field. The very first step in creating a conference abstract is first determining what your story is. What are you trying to tell? So ways that you can think about this is think about what were the hypotheses that you were coming up with as you were collecting data or trying to complete your research. And then if you've already started doing your data analysis, think about what are the conclusions that you've come about from the research you've collected. Once you have those hypotheses and conclusions, then it kind of organize them in a way that you feel tells a story. And that then becomes the research story that you're going to put into your research abstract. So once you have your research story, you then want to move on into actually writing your research abstract. Drafting your abstract, you're going to have six essential components in it. The first component, if you've watched any of my videos, you probably know where this is going. First thing you wanna do is say, why is your field important? And so this can be one sentence, just making a quick statement about why should anyone care about your specific field. And when I mean your field here, I don't mean like I was an analytical chemist. I don't mean why is analytical chemistry important. That's way too broad. You want to think about the one field that your specific paper would fit in, right? So in my case, if I'm doing work on analyzing steroids, I'm specifically going to talk about steroid analysis. I'm not going to talk about analytical chemistry. I'm not even probably going to talk about why mass spectrometry or IMability is important. I'm nailed down specifically into what you're studying. So even with steroid analysis, I'm probably not going to talk about why steroids are even important, but specifically why is analyzing those steroids important? So you really want to delve down into why is your specific research field important? And if you can, kind of connect why it's important to the goals of that conference. So if I'm presenting at a biological conference, I, instead of talking about, you know, steroid analysis in an analytical sense, I'm going to start talking about like, why is it important for their specific things? The second thing you want to do is give one to two sentences of background in the field. So wherever you're applying to, you can kind of assume that they have a base knowledge about what that general field is. And so what you want to do is give one to two sentences that tells them everything they need to know to be able to at least understand the results that you're getting and the importance it has in the field. This is not where you cover a lit review or talk through all the nuances of the field. You just want to give them a couple sentences to walk them through what they need to know. Then you're going to cover a one to two sentences of your method. This can be really quick in that you can simply just say, I did this or we looked at how X affects Y or something like that. Something very simple that it's going to make it easy for people to say, okay, you got these results because you did this, but you don't need to go into each of the individual components. You don't need to talk about solution preparation. You don't need to talk about how different instruments work or anything like that in your conference abstract. 
Next, you want to hit one sentence for each of your conclusions or hypotheses. In each of these, you can quickly say what were was your findings for each of those main topics that you came up with a conclusion with, or literally just saying your conclusion. If you haven't done the research yet, I know a lot of times you can submit abstracts where not all the research has been completed. So if you haven't done the research yet, say what you hypothesize to find and what you're gonna do to research that. Then as we finish up your abstract, we want two more sentences in there. The first sentence is, how does your research impact the field that you're going to present at? So again, this is very conference specific. If I'm presenting at a reproduction conference, I can say that because I've identified this technique, it's going to make it more easier to diagnose potential diseases and help researchers studying these diseases because it's easier for them to go through and run this quick analysis than it would be to run really long lengthy analyses. The final sentence that you want in your conference abstract is what do you recommend that the field does next in this situation? And so a lot of times people are going to conferences to inform their own research. And so if you're if you have an idea of where you'd want the field to go next, go ahead and include that as a final sentence. So now I want to walk you through one of my own posters, and I'm actually going to come up with a research abstract on the spot with you. So here is one of my research posters that I actually presented. And I presented this at the American Society for Mass Spectrometry. So that's what I'm going to gear my conference abstract towards. So in general, this is talking about how to separate out steroids using something called liquid chromatography and ion mobility coupled together, and then how we actually applied the LC method to develop a more sensitive protocol to analyze corticosterone and lipids. The similar theme going through is how we're applying liquid chromatography and ion mobility to enhance steroid analysis. So to start out, again, we're gonna hit on the introduction first. So why is my field important? Okay, one sentence done. Steroid analysis is important for medical diagnosis, environmental testing, and sports performance testing. So now I wanna go into the background. What are the one to two things that my audience needs to know to understand this? Since I'm presenting this at a mass spectrometry conference, I'm not gonna talk about what steroids are because ultimately that's not really what they need to know they're gonna be more focused on the analytical techniques that I'm using. So what I wanna talk about is why is my research important? So I'm gonna probably mention one sentence on how steroids are difficult to analyze and why they're difficult to analyze. And then I'm going to talk very briefly about maybe previous techniques that, I've, that have been used on steroids and what the type of technique that I'm going to be using on it. So let's talk first about um, why steroids are difficult to analyze. So, okay, one sentence done. Steroids have many isomers that have different biological functions, which makes them difficult to analyze. So now what I'm going to talk about is probably there's been multiple different methods that have been previously used to analyze. And one method of interest is liquid chromatography and ion mobility coupled together. So here I'm gonna say liquid chromatography, ion mobility spectrometry, and mass spectrometry have been recently coupled together as a method for analyzing steroids more rapidly. So these are the three different methods that I'm using, and I'm actually not gonna go into any more detail about how any of these things work. This is because I am submitting it to a mass spectrometry conference. This, my people are very well aware of what these different kinds of techniques are. If I was submitting it to a different conference where they didn't know what these techniques were, I would actually spend more time probably giving probably a sentence to each of these, explaining what they do, or very quickly saying like liquid chromatography, which separates based on X, I am ability, which separates based on Y, or something like that, giving a little bit more information but I'm not actually gonna give more information because of the field that I'm sending it to. So now I wanna talk about the methods that I'm going to do that's going to give me specific results. And this is another important thing is you want to make sure that you've abbreviated words above so they're not counting against you as new words because um, a lot of abstracts will have their own word count. So I now have two sentences for my methods. In the study, we analyzed four sets of steroid isomers through this thing, and we applied the optimal LCMS to a new serum extraction protocol. And then I'm gonna explain what the serum extraction protocol is. So in the serum extraction protocol, we modified a folk method to extract corticosterone and lipids simultaneously from five microliters of serum. 
So that's all the methods I'm going to include. And then, and why I'm including kind of the specifics there is that's really showing the novelty of it. So being able to extract steroids from five microliters of serum is actually a pretty novel thing. Uh, at least it was at the time that I did this research. So I'm including that in there. So now we're gonna move on. What are our findings? So you can see right now we're at 98 words. I would say most conference abstracts are anywhere from 250 to 400 words as their word limit. So let's try and get it under 250 words. Let's see if we can do it. All right, so here is my main finding for this poster. So through three different LC gradients, the steroid isomers were separated at varying degrees. When we combined the IMS and the LC dimension, we had three different gradients. So the 11 minute gradient gave qualitative separation, which means that we could see different peaks for each of them, but we couldn't necessarily quantify those peaks because there was too much overlap with a peak of a different steroid. The 12 minute gave quantitative separation based on peak height, which means that each peak was separated to at least a resolution of 1.0. And then the 14 minute gradient gave a quantitative separation based on peak area. This is saying that the resolution was above 1.5, which means we can use peak areas to quantify all of the steroids within that gradient. So that covers my figure here, my figure here, and my figure over here. So now I wanna talk about this serum extraction protocol and touch on this figure here. So again, I want to limit this to about one to two sentences. Okay, so using this, I'm going to say, using the 14 minute gradient, the serum extraction protocol allowed for the simultaneous extraction of corticosterone and lipids. That's the main finding there. And then furthermore, corticosterone was able to be quantitatively measured in five serum samples with a CV less than 5%. So this is a coefficient of variation. It's basically saying that we're getting reproducible results. So this overall is demonstrating all of the findings that I want to discuss within this. I'm not breaking this out as much into what each figure would be, but just basically telling them what are the main findings that I found within my paper. And now I want to walk into why these findings are important for their conference specifically. So here is one sentence saying, this study has shown the capabilities of this LCIMS methods to enhance the separation of steroid isomers and the applicability of the separation in biological samples. So I'm telling them why this is important to their conference. This conference is all about developing analytical techniques and thinking about analytical techniques involving mass spectrometry. And so what I'm showing here is coupling these things to mass spectrometry is actually developing this really cool analytical technique. And this analytical technique has real biological applications. And so the last thing we want to do is talk about the future work. So here, Future work will expand the number of steroid isomers analyzed and alter the serum extraction protocol to be able to analyze more steroids at biological level. So that was one of the problems with this is we could measure corticosterone, but other steroids that were at lower and lower levels were, weren't meeting our limits of detection through this method. So here's overall a conference abstract that I'd probably go through and edit it at least once or twice before I would submit it. So basically I'm walking through why my field of steroid analysis is important in the yellow. In the light blue, I'm talking about what problem is my research solving and a little bit of background about steroids. The red is talking about the basic background information that they need. So the fact that I'm coupling these different techniques together to use for to study steroids more rapidly. In the gray, I'm talking about my methods. So what I specifically did in this research that I'm going to be presenting, the pink is talking about um, my results. So through using different gradients, I was able to achieve three different types of separation. And then we applied one of those gradients to the serum extraction protocol that let me quantitatively identify corticosterone. The dark green is showing what is the impact of this study. So this study has shown the capability of this method to separate steroids and the, its applicability in biological samples. Again, this is being targeted towards the specific conference I'm submitting to. And this dark green teal color, um, is showing what the future work is. So we're gonna, we wanna expand the number of steroid isomers that we're looking at and both within the 
traditional uh, method development route and in the serum extraction protocol we're looking at. And there you go. I've written a conference abstract and it took me less than 30 minutes to do. So this is why having that story developed previously is going to be really helpful because you can really quickly just sit down and walk through this formula of how to write your conference abstract. Here is a sneak peek at Alicia Zendez's video. And then afterwards, I'm actually going to rate her abstract. Okay, so now I'm going to go through this with you and then talk about what steps I hit, I guess. So this abstract, I titled it Inhibition of Dawanel Activates the DNA Damage Response Pathway and Reveals a Potential Novel Therapeutic Strategy for Pancreatic Cancer. Hey guys, so it's a few days later and Lee Shu and Dev who this video was in collaboration with, has watched through my video and created her own research abstract. She actually asked me to rate her abstract. So I'm gonna pull up her video, give you a little bit of what you're in for, and I'm going to show you um, how I would rate her conference abstract, and then a couple of things that she could maybe improve, which might be helpful for you if you're trying to improve your conference abstract. So here's her video. She actually goes through like in real time recording how she wrote her abstract and talks about a project and more stuff like that. So make sure you check out her video. It's a really amazing vlog, especially if you're struggling through this process and you want to feel like you're not as alone. It's just a really awesome vlog and she just does a great job um, just kind of showing her life as a grad student and giving you advice. The first thing that I will say is in the full video, um, she talks about she went and looked at the conference she's planning on submitting it to guidelines for the word count. So what is their word limitations on it? And she found that she couldn't find any on their website, which I always suggest before you ever start writing your abstract, go and look at your where you're submitting to and see what their guidelines are. because. For example, if I write for certain conferences, they have their own like structure you have to follow. It can't just even be a single abstract. But the second thing I will tell you is whenever you're writing your abstract, actually go in once they open the submission portal. If you can't find their word count on their page, go in and attempt to submit something because a lot of times they won't have a word count on their page, but when you go in to submit in the text box that you would paste in your abstract, it actually has a word count on it or a character count. I would go through the submission process and then when you get to that step, actually um, type in something and see if it starts ticking down the characters. Um, this will give you a good idea of what your actual word count is going to be. If it doesn't do anything like that, then they probably don't have a word count, but I've been burned a lot of times when the day before it's due, I go in to submit it and it's like, oh, we only accept 250 words, even though they never put that anywhere. So make sure you always go check that whenever you're writing it. What she found though was that there was no word count. So based off, we're gonna go based off that. And so, so looking at this, the very first thing is I love her first sentence. Her first sentence is telling me why I should care about this abstract and why it's important. She said that she's submitting this to experimental biology. So this is exactly what I would be expecting to see, something related to the biology. And she's talking about the importance of pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma. Um, and that it's the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the US, which means if you can figure out a therapeutic strategy for this, you're probably going to save so many lives. So most of this is talking about her background. So she goes from here to about here, just talking about the background information that we need to know. My critique would be this is really long for a conference abstract. So there's some things here that I would immediately start taking out. So this, it is a critical player and drug target of the development of MLL rearranged leukemia, colorectal, and breast cancers. I would probably remove that sentence. I get why she put it in here because like that, you know, as she's thinking through it, like that's something really important. But this isn't directly related to what she's trying to talk about. And I think the fact that she's submitting it to uh, experimental biology, this sentence of here is really kind of telling us a lot of that. Um, 
that it's a critical player in all these different processes, which we know are related to cancers if, you're, if you've studied cancers. So I think going straight from this sentence into the function of this is unknown. It would actually be a stronger way of presenting it and it would make it a little bit more concise. I would also, these first few sentences, I would try and figure out a way to make them a little bit more succinct so she's saying that PDAC often, um, PDAC cells often possess defects in DNA damage response DDR pathways that are not observed in healthy, okay. Histone lysine methylation impacts various cell cellular processes, including DDR. I think this sentence is really saying, you know, this impacts this, okay. So maybe we can move this piece of information into another sentence. A structurally unique example of, D, of dot 1L, uh, which does not have a evolutionary conserved SET domain. Okay, so this here, when you have sentences where you're bringing in a component, that's already telling me that that sentence is unnecessary. So saying a structurally unique example is dot 1L, we need to figure out a way to bring that into another place. So I'm not sure if she's saying a structurally unique example of histone lysine methylation. If she is, I would say, you know, histone lysine methylation, such as dot one L or something like that. So this sentence should be integrated into one of these previous sentences up here. I like this sentence in here, remove out this sentence and then keep this sentence. And that's one way to kind of truncate up this background section to make it a little bit more concise. I love how she has her hypothesis in here, which is the next sentence here. So this is her hypothesis here, love that. This case, I would probably get rid of it. Um, whenever I'm trying to write, this is great if you're trying to write like an introduction for a paper, awesome. For a conference abstract, Every, all of the information should be so succinct in the same place that you don't really need to have this, this is what you're gonna learn about in the rest of this abstract because the rest of your abstract is less than a page long, right? So I would probably get rid of her kind of introductory sentence here um, and instead go into her hypothesis directly into her methods. I think she did a great job on her methods, um, really succinct, gives them exactly what they need to know. I'm scrolling like I'm scrolling through Word, but it's not on Word, okay. So then we've got her results. Overall, I think she did a great job in her results. Um, so her very first sentence is really telling us kind of the main point, right? So this treatment resulted in a dose-dependent decrease of cell proliferation, which means it's working in the form of treating cancer because you want to stop the cells from proliferating because they're proliferating out of control, right? So I love that. I, I would love for her to go from her methods into this. And then this decrease in cell proliferation uh, was congruent with, so she's now going further and explaining, okay, we have a decrease in cell proliferation. This was also uh, congruent with aberrant cell cycle progression. There we go. Um, cool, I love that. Immunofluorescence demonstrates an increase compared to control, suggesting the activation of DDR. Okay, so now we're pulling back in from that introduction, good. Um, screening the inhibitors of various DDR pathway components, we found, so now we're going into molecular mechanisms here. So I'm gonna scroll this up just a little bit. So yeah, now we're, so she's going from, okay, what is the overall change that's happening? Cell proliferation. Okay, now we're gonna scroll down into, can we actually identify the molecular mechanisms causing that? So we can see that it's because of the cell cycle uh, progression is getting messed up. And then that the reason that's happening is specific to the DDR pathway, which, which means that their specific therapeutic treatment is going for um, the DDR pathway. So that's showing that what they're doing is killing, but in the way that they think it should be. Um, and then screening the inhibitors, we found that combined dot and, and PARP inhibition displays greater reduction. Okay. I, I love this. I don't really have much to change there. It is a little bit long, but there's so much she's covering here that I would rather her spend more time here 
then spend the time in her background if she does have a limited word count. I think she did a great job of moving, you know, down from, okay, here's the, the, the big phenotypic change. Let's go into molecular and then let's talk about what is our fundamental finding that we found a really good mix of therapies that can treat these cells. And then she's going into her future direction. So, um, oh, sorry. So then up here, it's her main impact. Her main impact is she's revealed a potential avenue for new combination strategies. This is awesome. Okay. So then into future studies, future studies will focus on elucidating molecular mechanism. Okay. So she's done a little bit of that, but she wants to go into it a little bit more. Okay. Um, and identifying additional novel combinations. Okay. So that's kind of future projects. We found one. Okay, now let's increase our screening and look for more. So I I think she did a really great job here. Rating, I would give it a four out of five. I think if she just summed up her background information a little bit more, it would hit it right on the head. Um, but overall, I think she did a, an amazing job um, going through this conference abstract, especially she hasn't really written many of these before. So I hope that this kind of helped you understand how to walk through these abstracts, both from just what you need to include, how I did it, go watch her video, see, you know, what she was thinking about as she was walking through it. I think she did an amazing vlog on this and just overall, she has really, really amazing vlogs on her channel. So make sure you click on the link in the description below to check out her channel. If you are working and trying to figure out how to write stuff, Check out my scientific research paper checklist in the link below. It's going to help you move forward in converting your presentations into abstracts and into finally papers. And I hope this video is helpful. Make sure you check out Lee Shu and Dev's channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.